Barrett, and I uh, retired from WSU, uh, Apple Breeding. I'm David Bedford, and I'm the Apple Breeder at the University of Minnesota. Yeah. So the traits that are going to be important to me are going to be the traits that are important to consumers. Uh, we, we had to kind of make a little judgment early on in the breeding program. Did we want to have the objectives that primarily satisfy the producer, or maybe the warehouse, or that primarily satisfied the consumer? We made the decision to go with the consumer. And there were there's some people that, that didn't understand that, didn't really understand why we put the consumer first. So you've got to, the, the person who actually puts the money on the table is the one you have to impress. And that's the consumer. And so we had long deliberations about what is it that the consumer really, really wants. And what we sort of concluded was that they don't always know. They don't always know what they want. It's like Steve Jobs. He said, you can't ask people what they want in, in a smartphone. They don't even know what a smartphone is. Mm -hmm. So we, we had to go use our expertise and our knowledge about apples and apple characteristics that the consumer had no understanding of and make sure that we get those in there. Because the consumer couldn't ask for what, Cosmic, what, what Honeycrisp provided. They couldn't ask for it. They didn't know it existed. You didn't even know it first, yeah. perhaps. Yeah, that's right. So it, 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 it's going beyond what the consumer tells us we want. It's going what we goes to where what we think they might want. And we know that, that, yes, they want some sugar and they want some acid and different people in different proportions. But when it comes to texture, the one thing that turns people off the most, from my experience, is it doesn't have enough firmness. They're just not firm apples. Uh, and the real bad ones are, are mealy. <laughs> so it, it's that firmness. And, and then, then we, we didn't know at first, but then we added that they really want Christmas too, mm -hmm. because Honeycrisp came from nowhere in terms of the consumer it built on the basis of consumer experience. And then after that, we realized that, well, they, apple, apples that are juicy are really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's those, those three aspects of texture, firmness, crispness, and juiciness, that we really put the emphasis on, particularly out of storage. And that's... That, that, that was the driving force for us, was what the consumer would appreciate out of long-term storage. Yeah, I think our story is, is fairly similar uh, in that our two priorities, even before I came to the program, from what I could see, the crosses had been made, uh, were texture and flavor. And really when we look, and I guess when, when I started analyzing it, we'd look at what makes you buy an apple again. You know, what makes you buy an apple the first time can be one thing. It might be size, it might be color, it might be price even, you know. We can control those things, but there's not too many people that say after they've eaten a particular apple, that was such a pretty apple, I've got to have another one, you know. Now, the, the pretty apple made them buy it, maybe, but it didn't make them rebuy it. So now you get them in, uh, and, and you've got it in their mouth, and you've got to impress them. And so from our experience, those two things that impress them are texture and flavor. I, I asked growers when I first started the, in this industry, uh, why, why do you still grow Red Delicious? And they didn't particularly like the question, but I asked them. Mm -hmm. And the answer, I was even more annoyed with the answer. The answer was because we do better than anybody else. <laughs> and to me, that was absolutely the wrong answer. Why produce more and more of something people are liking less and less? Yeah, yeah, interesting. I, 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 it just, it was the wrong <laughs> comment, the wrong answer. They should have been yeah. trying to grow something that consumers wanted more. And I think the fact that we have a product that people want and we're making great strides. I mean, when I first started in my job, there were basically three apples, well, two apples on the, on the market. There was Red Delicious and Golden Delicious. And gradually, some of the... Um, uh, the marketer said, okay, we'll add a green one. So Granny Smith got included. And that's like a desert of no choices, really, when I look back at that. Uh, and fortunately, the, the floodgates kind of broke after that. And I think we were, in many respects, able to ride that open acceptance. And, and part of it was because new varieties opened the consumer's mind. I think the future is just going to make apples more and more presentable. And, you know, it's really sometimes we say, well, what are we competing with? Are we competing with pears or peaches or grapes or bananas? 
not really. What we're competing with is yogurt, uh, granola bars, um, you know, fast foods that Snack are foods. easy to eat. Yeah. yeah, that get millions of dollars of promotion. You know, apples really don't get national promotion to any meaningful way. So we're still very primitive in, in that sense in, in terms of how we're presented in the marketplace. But the good news is people almost inherently like apples if we yeah. just treat that uh, that trust they've given in, to us with respect and give them better and better and better. And I think now we can move from the category of just being something that's, well, kind of good for you, you know, you should have that. and. Uh, that, that's where kale and broccoli fall, you know, <laughs> and God bless them. We need them, but we really can be the next level up. We can be competing with yogurt and granola bars and that sort of thing. We've come a long way, I, I, it, truly, compared with what we started with. And I started with the same three colors yeah. that you started with, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> red, yellow, and green. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, when you look at the texture characteristics or the flavor characteristics, they fell short. Yeah. And consumers know it. And uh, we've been both trying very hard to, to improve that, and I think uh, we've come a long way. It's, it's amazing. Don't quite know what the next group are going to be like, <laughs> but uh, uh, we've, we can, I think, feel confident that we're giving people good products yeah. now with, yeah. with the apples that we have today. I mean, look, banana hasn't changed in 50 no, years. No, it hasn't. But still apples, one variety. But apple, right, still one variety. And, and look at how much we've improved. Yeah. And, and so we're giving the consumer something they didn't necessarily know they wanted, but they're getting it. They're now, happy and, for it, and they're going to be happy for it. Yeah. <laughs>